David versus Goliath. Earlier today, the Ithaca College women's lacrosse team against number two William Smith took down the Herons in a showing that proved that the little man can come out on top. Today, the men's lacrosse team looks to do the exact same from the South Hill as they take on the number three ranked team in the country, the RIT Tigers. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Night Lights here at Higgins Stadium. Tobias Zabori, Devin Jarvis along with you here for this contest in the Liberty League. Devin, how you doing today? I'm doing amazing. We've got a wonderful match on set for us. A little bit of bad blood potentially between the two teams, but nevertheless, it's going to be a great night on Higgins Stadium. Well, you mentioned it a little bit there, Devin. Bad blood, and that's going to all boil down to the potential matchup here. Jake Erickson. Erickson for the Bombers. He came in excuse me, for the RIT Tigers, Jake Erickson, a former member of the Ithaca College Bombers. Now he's on the other side. He went from blue and white to orange and black, and now against his former team, maybe looking to do a little bit of damage on his old home court. That's exactly right. He came from Ithaca, getting a career 189 points, 90 goals, 99 assists in that time, and has come to the Tigers and put up 24 goals, 26 assists for a team top of the mark stat of 50 points on the season and he's just been tearing it up all year long yeah you talked about that jake erickson well he's found his way here in his new home in the bombers they're looking for a little bit of footing against this rit tigers team recent history not been kind to them all-time bombers 29 and 30 against the tigers but they haven't won at home since 2010 that was before higgins stadium and this field was even built yeah, it's not going to be a smooth ride for the Bombers, let's just say that, because if they're going to win this game, it's going to be because of probably some deficit on the Tigers' side and some upside on the Bombers. So if they can come out of tonight with a win, it'd be a major success, especially looking at their last couple games against RPI. They fell that one late in the game, 9-10, to and then Union they went on the road to lose over last weekend, 7-12. to 12. So kind of looking for a rebound with this one, but it's going to be very interesting to see how things go. And you mentioned some of those Liberty League contests in there. Ithaca, they're 0-3 in the conference. RIT, they're 2-1. Bombers really need this win if they want to stay alive in the Liberty League playoff picture. Yes, they do. And right now they're sitting at 7th in the conference, winless in Liberty League play. And you look at the top of that. You have four teams in the top seven in the Liberty League on that national poll. RPI, St. Lawrence, RIT, and Union. So Ithaca's got some work to do if they want to see playoff time come the end of the month. Absolutely. Now over on this Bombers team, I think you mentioned a little bit earlier, they played really well against RPI. What are they going to have to do in today's contest? I think if they come into today, have some strong defense, and really get shots out. They're last in the Liberty League in shots per game. If they can flip that script and put pressure on Alex Zborowski and the general RIT defense, I could see maybe an upset happening here on Higgins Field. Thank you, Devin. Well, we're going to take a quick little break here as we get ready for the game and the national anthem. When we come back, Bombers Tigers right here on VIC Radio.
men's lacrosse as they get set to take on the RIT Tigers in Liberty League play. Toby Zabore, Devin Jarvis along with you getting set in this massive contest. Bombers trying to take down a ranked opponent for the first time in a long time. It hasn't been since they took down Union 2021. They were number eight in the country at that point. Yeah, and this is not really the same story as that season held. Right now, they're six and five on the season, winless in conference play, and a new head coach who started out the season quite strong with wins over St. John Fisher and Lycoming, but his conference play since then has raised some question marks on what the future looks like for this Bombers team, but it's a small sample size. We can't make determinations on only three games, but nevertheless, it's not going to be an easy task for the Bombers to take down RIT this evening, and some magic fairy dust that was left over from the women's lacrosse game might need to translate here for the men's Bombers. Yeah, you mentioned that. We talked a little bit about that earlier. On the women's side, they took down number two, William Smith. First time they did that in a long time, and now the road to the Liberty League Championship runs through Higgins, and for the Bombers men's team, they've struggled against the top spot of that Liberty League. We saw it earlier against RPI. Coming up this weekend, they have St. Lawrence. They've already lost to Union. They have Clarkson and Skidmore later in the year. How important is this as a tone setter? I mean, not only is it a tight numbers and orange trimming, they take it down the far side, now moving into attacking territory and spinning it back out. Winning was Alan French on the draw. Face off, excuse me. As Tigers holding possession, they bring the speed, now swing it back out. RIT, the top scoring team in the Liberty League. Moving inside, drawing is Caden Brunson. Brunson goes in a shot, and it was deflected on front. Drops down in front of the goal, a scrum for it. Bomber's still trying to reach for it. Ithaca does pick it up. A good job by Jake Docks, and Ithaca will go the other way. Yeah, a quick shutout on that first possession for the Tigers. Exactly what you want to see if you're the Bombers right now, but things might not last too long as you got it, Toby. I mean, transition in the middle yeah. of the field. And that's what this game's going to be. The Bombers are going to want to play tough and scrappy, it feels like, today. Yeah, I think so. You're not going to try and make it easy for this team, especially when they're going to have to travel about two hours for their destination today. So make it as difficult as possible for the Tigers, whether it be a win or a loss. Hope they don't make it easy. Long drive from Rochester to Ithaca here for this midweek game as Bombers passing it around the middle of the field. Bringing it down to Cullen Adams, and he will drive right around on the middle side trying to move to the attack and that was a shot sidearm went for the top corner couldn't get it it went way beyond the margins but the bombers are the closest to it so they hang on to possession and it'll be kyle proctor who takes it from the line as ithaca swing it around in the wing here there's a shot it goes over the goal goes beyond the end line this time rit is closer to it the bombers once again trying to sling it Nothing going that time, and RIT goes the other direction. Both shots from the Bombers in this game have come above the goal. They're not really looking for anything else right now, but you talk about those two players, Colin Adams, six goals on the season, all of them coming the last five games, so expect a bigger performance than you used to see out of him this evening. Bombers are going to need it in this contest against the Tigers as RIT quickly moving towards the Bombers' side. The side of the field. Now they drive into the attack. Shot score. RIT gets the scoring started early, and it's Michael Finneran, the senior from Andover. He gets it going, and the Tigers lead 1 0. 12 57 to go in the first. Seven points in his two games before this make it eight now in his last three. And on the season, he was struggling. Only had three in his first eight games, so he has really flipped the script, and that's been a theme overall for this RIT squad. The stats across the board for each individual player have been better as the season goes on. I got a lot of guys who lead the Liberty League and a lot of stats as we go back to the face-off circle. That one rolls off towards the RIT side. But there's going to be a penalty against the Tigers on the face-off, so the Bombers will take it. It's going to be Jared Sedlock from the top of the Ithaca Bombers logo. And the offense resets for Ithaca. Draws a crucial point of this afternoon's game. If they can control the draws, it's going to be a outcome probably more in favor than you might expect for the Bombers. Teams that control the faceoffs tend to win as the Bombers bring it down to John Ceramic. He sends it back towards the top on the wings as the Bombers bring it out in front. Trying to even this one up. 12-23 to go in the first down. 1-0 to the Tigers. 
back down to Adams. Adams drives inside, try to go on the crossing route. Couldn't get it to connect with Kyle Proctor, but Proctor will pick it up out of bounds by the end line. The high shot once again from Adams. He's gonna play on that right side a lot. Let's see what creativity he can bring into his offensive game. High shot a couple of times here for the Bombers is Ithaca. Once again, good defense by the Tigers. Out by the yellow line is driving it once again inside. He's gonna have to run out behind the net and pass it. It's Graham Brady. Brady still holding on to it. He'll try to go in front, a sweeper down low, and it's gonna roll wide and out of bounds. Bombers will retain as they're closest to it, but 16 seconds on the shot clock. So something's gonna have to happen quickly. It is ceramic. He passes it around the underside. Bombers try to reset and they do. Back towards the top, now five on the shot clock. Quick shot and in. Bombers, the equalizer, Charlie Niebuhr. And it's one all, 11.36 in the first. And how about that? In the final seconds of the shot clock, they were able to take that pressure and make diamonds with it from far out. Niebuhr able to snipe that one and you really didn't expect much to happen there, but with that high velocity through traffic, he's able to sneak it by and just like you said, not things up at one apiece and a good start for the Bombers in my opinion. Absolutely, and they're gonna try and capitalize off that in the face-off circle. That's what they got on last time and they do it again. Bombers win back-to-back face-offs and exactly the spark plug they needed against the number three team in the country. As the Ithaca offense will now set up down low on the wings on the near side. They reset bring it towards the middle of the field. As right now, Ithaca trying to reset the offense. Siku Ibrahima hangs onto it by the top of the A on the Ithaca logo. He drives in soccer as the Bombers hang on to possession, second time they've done that in this possession. Driving underneath, trying to move inside is Ithaca. They're gonna pass it back out to Jack Pastor. He swings it back to Ibrahima. Ibrahima, 18 on the shot clock, 10-29 left in the first quarter. Bombers, John Ceramic takes a shot and that's a save for RIT. Contested in front and a scrum picked up by the Tigers and will go the other way. Bit of a high pass, that's gonna be in contest middle of the field, overrunning it is Ithaca. RIT eventually gets to it. A lot of contact and action in that middle third of the field, but the Tigers eventually reset and they'll come up with it. And this is what you're not gonna like if you're the Bombers. When they get these long possessions without much pressure from Ithaca, specifically if they can win the faceoff or cause a turnover on the defensive side, this is when the production is going to come. So they're gonna have to play great here on their defensive side. Well, RIT still around the middle. There's a side armor shot score. Tigers retake the lead, Dylan Bruno. Makes a two to one RIT, 9.42 left in the first. Six straight goals in six straight games for Dylan Bruno now. And he came in from the midfield line, torching down with speed, got the pass and caught the defense off guard. There was really nobody to guard him when he came in there. And straight down Main Street, he's able to make his moment known. And RIT regaining the lead now, 942. But still, I'd say I like what I'm seeing from the Bombers. Strong defense for the most part, kind of an outlier situation there, and they've been good on the draws. Well, here on that one, it's gonna roll towards that far sideline. Tigers do pick it up, but a valiant shot by Corey White on the faceoff for Ithaca. Tigers resetting near side in the middle of the field. Passing it around to Sean Tierney, who will run off towards the sideline. RIT. Up by one with 9.20 left in the first as they pass it towards the far side, still hanging out in the middle. Tigers trying to slow down the game as now they bring the speed into the attacking zone. There was a pass by Jake Erickson. He went for the shot, bodied, went a little bit too high. Tigers retained possession. Let it go a little bit too early, and that resulted in a moonshot over the goal, but it stays RIT. As Tigers, as you mentioned, hang on to it. 47 seconds left on the shot clock. RIT still holding on to it. Tigers, passing it out in front, contested near the goal. That one bounces. They're gonna keep play going. Does it go in? The ball bounces in and it's gonna count. Ticky tack goal goes the Tigers way and it's 3-1 RIT. I mean the creativity by the Tigers on that one. A bounce pass, goal side. And then finally, as the ball's in the air, it takes a couple hops and finds the net behind Cole Corrigan. But really, really solid stuff and 
creative offense from the Tigers. And listen, you're going to see that all day today, but they are getting it right off the jump here in the first quarter. So the Bombers are going to have to find their rhythm a little bit, and it starts here on the draw. Well, there's going to be a scrum right down on the A of the Ithaca logo, and once again for the third time in a row, it's the Tigers who win a faceoff. So RIT in full control after the bounce pass shot that went in to give them a 3-1 lead with 8.36 to go in the first quarter. Hanging on to it, the Tigers goalie, Zabrowski. He's all the way out as RIT still hanging on to the ball. They're going to control it now towards the attacking spot. Tigers slow it back down as Erickson passes it around to reset that fan offense spread out across the field. Jake Erickson still waiting for a pass inside as the Tigers go, and that's going to go behind the net on a nice little nifty pass. That one's down to Erickson. Erickson two steps. Erickson backhanded, bounces in front. Good save by the Bombers, and Cole Corrigan keeps it out of the net. Defense takes over. Not letting him get that sweet revenge quite yet, and Erickson might have to work a little bit more extra hard than the rest of these RIT players today for his offensive production. Bombers quickly move it into the attacking zone as hanging onto it is John Ceramic. He's gonna be in high contest, so he's gonna try and back off now to find someone to pass it to. He's just gonna lob it to Graham Brady. Brady back to Ceramic. Excuse me, that one was off to Jared Sedlock. Bombers to the top and Kyle Proctor. Proctor hands it back. 42 left in the shot clock, 718 in the first quarter. Bombers trailing by two. Against the number three team in the country, the RIT Tigers driving inside right now, Sam Baker, and he's going to back off. Baker looking around on the far side by the wing. Now moves inside. Baker stutter steps, flips it back. Bombers, 20 left in the shot clock. Got to get something going as Graham Brady faces the full test of the Tigers defense. There's a sidewinder, and Graham Brady does it again. Bombers cut the lead. And it's 2-3, to 6.51 in the first. We talked about those high shots that he's been doing so far. Finally gets the third one to go. And to look at what this guy has done over the past two seasons. He's a sophomore right now. Only two games played in his entire last season. And in the first seven games of this year, he had zero points. Flipping it to now seven points in his last six games, he's been phenomenal on the turnaround. On a face-off, Bombers trying to capitalize on momentum. It squirts away, and they do. Ithaca wins a key face-off, and they've got it deep in RIT territory. Behind the goal pass to Charlie Niebuhr. Niebuhr racing around. He's in contest in the far wing area, so he'll just sling it back to Jack Pastor, who brings it to Ibrahima. Bombers holding on to the ball. Right around the middle of the field, driving in, down by one with 52 on the shot clock. Pass behind the goal for Ithaca. A lot of white jerseys spread out around that right side net. Ibrahima drives inside. That's a side pass, not quite in front. There's a second chance score. Charlie Niebuhr hits second of the game, and we're all knotted up at three with six to go in quarter number one. And how about Proctor to set that whole thing up? Was a crease line to get a pass, move toward X, and then found the cutting Niebuhr to make the play and make the goal. A extremely well drawn up play by the Ithaca offense, and Tommy Pierce has a solid performance already eight minutes into this one, rather nine minutes into it, and he is really cooking up on that offensive side in these last couple minutes. Bombers once again look for the faceoff, and they do as faceoffs, seeming to be a tone setter in this one. We'll see if that continues on this Ithaca possession. As Jared Sedlock hangs onto it on the near side by the middle of the field. That near wing area, they now move it back and around. As the Bombers reset the offense on the far side. Running it across is Graham Brady. Brady driving inside, he'll just dump it off. A little pass in front, that one to Niebuhr. He tries to shovel it in, no go. And it's going to go wide up by the end line. It's going to be picked up by the Bombers, and Kyle Proctor will send it in. Ithaca in the attacking zone. Heavy contest from RIT with 40 left in the shot clock. Little sidearm pass as Cullen Adams tries to drive inside. He'll send it back behind the net. 
Now a feed pass in front. Towards the top by that yellow goal circle. Drive inside, shot, what a save by Zabrowski. And talking about this defense so far, Tanner Winkleman is playing man defense against Ceramic right now. The rest of that RIT squad, regular zone. But when you have a player like Ceramic who's so dangerous day in, day out, you need to put a little extra attention on him if you can. And Zabrowski got his stick on one earlier. That one was a little bit too high for him as he watches it go above the net. 444 left in the first with 45 on the shot clock in a three-all contest. Bombers offense still hanging on by the RIT goal. Trying to drive inside for Ithaca. And he'll eventually lose it as Graham Brady as he's going to be forced out by this stout Tigers defense. Now he's going to rebound and go back inside, but eventually tosses it over for the Bombers to reset. Grace just terrorizing Brady with the pole and forces him all the way outside to reset. Well, Ceramic tries to go outside. That one's back to Brady, and that one, it's going to hit off the shot clock well wide, but the Bombers hang on to it. Only 13 left on that clock. So the Bombers' offense running out of time. Their first goal came in a similar spot. We'll see if they can do it again with five on the shot clock. Running around behind the net. they got to get something going quick. Three, and they're just going to dump it off behind the end line to give RIT worse field position. That burns two minutes off the clock since their last goal, and generally I'll take that if you're Ithaca. Time is probably your friend generally in this thing, and if they can keep that on their side, it's going to be a good result. Well, RIT's passing offense quickly moves it into the attacking zone as it's down just behind the goal. Now Tigers passing it around the fan. 3.39 left in the first quarter, a three-all contest. Bombers and Tigers in a Liberty League matchup. RIT passing it near side to Caden Brunson. Brunson circles back and resets the offense. Back to Brunson with 44 on that shot clock. As he's in defensive contest, Brunson loses it out of his stick. He's there to get it, but now he's going to have to pass. Deep for Gaston. Gaston, back to Erickson, who slings it to the far side. Jake Erickson still yet to make an impact in today's game. Tigers pass in front. That one, a little underarm pass. There's a flag called on that one. Goal goes through. It's going to count. It's 4-3 Tigers. Caden Brunson... Got the better of him there and really came down to P.J. Roth, who was on the defense. Gave him a little bit of a shove, and that's where the flag was thrown. But nevertheless, was able to get the underhand by Corrigan. And the defense has been very physical from the Bombers so far. So you're surprised he was even able to score on that one. But, I mean, you got to give credit to him, I guess. Yeah. Impressive shot and for the Bombers, trying all they can to keep RIT out of the goal. They once again trail by one with exactly three minutes left on the first quarter clock. Bombers will win the faceoff, and now after having to go the other way, they'll bring it into the attacking zone with a stout, angry Tigers defense against them. Try to drive it inside all the way. No go there for Liam Lennon, and the Tigers immediately take over. A little premature there. Liam Lennon trying to take a shot. He only has one goal on this season. Maybe not the smartest play on that front as being sent to the turf, and a flag goes up. Body down for RIT. Caden Perry was slammed down by the Bombers, and there's going to be a flag drawn by the refs. Yeah, John Ceramic might have maybe not done something legal on that one. He came in from the back. Quick stick check right there to just absolutely blow up the play, and he'll sit this one out for, I'm guessing, at least a minute. We'll see what the call is made. But that's actually his first penalty on the entire season. A very disciplined player so far. He'll only get 30 seconds for it. But a little bit surprising there for how much action he gets. Taking him this long, but he'll have to sit out 30 as the Tigers offense will get the ball with a man-up opportunity. And there's no better team in the Liberty League on capitalizing on power plays than this RIT Tigers team. So we'll see. RIT just passing it around, waiting for their break inside. Pass out in front, and they score. Tigers take advantage almost immediately with seven left on the penalty clock, and they're up by two. It's 5-3, RIT. Yeah, right now they're first in the Liberty League and man-up goals per game, 1.5. 
and that's going to go up after this one if they can get another one later in this game. But, I mean, you can't expect <laughs> not for them to have something planned up. It really stems from their off-ball movement, when they can just pass back and forth, keeping that umbrella offense formation, and then get their players near X or off the ball on the opposite side of the field, wherever it is, to make those moves and open up the offense. That's where they are so dangerous, and that's exactly where their offense has come from so far this game. Ethan Harkins is credited with the goal for the Tigers as they make a quick defensive stop and are back on the attack. Swung back to the goalie in Zborowski. Zborowski passes it over. And the Tigers offense with 138 left in the first quarter will try and draw as much clock out as they can. Bombers playing heavy contest. Still in contest. Ball's rolling around the ground. Ithaca picks it up. As hanging on to it is Jared Sedlock. So Sedlock, he's going to reset and pass it back down. Sedlock was in contest with Jake Erickson, and he eventually drew it back out, and the whistle blows. And there's going to be a timeout taken by the Bombers. 1.15 left in the first quarter. RIT leading 5-3. The Bombers have kept it close in this one. It's only a two-goal deficit, and physicality has been the word of this game so far. Yes, it absolutely has. Tommy Pierce has made an emphasis on that, especially on the defensive side. If they can put pressure and tire out this team who, I mean, we mentioned it before, a two-hour ride is not just a luxury. You're not going to be able to sit back. They're going to be a little restless coming into this one, and maybe a little tired in some senses too, having not been moving for so long. So if they can apply the pressure on the defensive side the way they have so far, I think they're going to be solid for the remainder of this game. But for me, the emphasis, if they want to put a tourniquet on what the offensive production has been so far for the Tigers, it's going to come from keeping your defenders aware of where these off-ball players are on the RIT side. Don't just keep your head straight up where the ball is. Look all the way around. You got to have those eyes in the back of your head sometimes, and especially against the number three team in the nation. If they can work their defensive side to maybe play a little bit more man defense in a certain extent, keep the zone that they have right now, but just play a little bit closer to where everybody is, they're going to find a lot more success. And because I'm going to say four of the goals that we've seen from RIT so far has been from a pass inside near net and then a capitalization off of that pass. So really that's what it comes down to. And on the offensive side, I like what I've seen so far, but I almost want to see exactly what RIT is doing on the Ithaca side. They're having a lot of pass around the umbrella, pass around, make circles on the offense, and then see what they can do from there as an opening comes open to them. But really it comes down to getting creative with your off-ball movement, and that's what the best teams do in the entire nation, trick the defense. And, I mean, you're looking at an RIT team that's first and goals forced and first and goals allowed. So they really don't have any holes anywhere, but try and make one on the offense if you can. Well, it's Cullen Adams as the teams break down to the huddles. He gets a starter for the Bombers offense, and an errant pass is going to cross that end line on the midfield. Still in contest. No one is going to try and claim it. Bombers and RIT fighting for it, squirting out towards the Tigers' side, and RIT does pick it up, but a whistle blows, and it's going to stay Tiger ball. Offense is now in transition as RIT and Jake Erickson wait for the attackers to get set as they bring in their new personnel package. Whistle comes in once again. There's a shot down low, and it rolls on in. Underhand shot. And the Tigers add another. It's 6-3 RIT. Didn't mean, m didn't need much time to capitalize there. And Finneran is going to get a second in this one. It was exactly what I just described before. A pass right by the net to, you know, make your open man capitalize on it. And they really did it there. Finneran's had two of those tonight. And with what RIT has planned against the Cynthia offense, it's not going to stop. RIT on a three-goal run. They now lead 6-3 to three with 43 seconds left in the first quarter. RIT will once again win the faceoff as it's been all Tigers the last four times they've gone to that faceoff circle. Pass back to Erickson, who's been an almost non-story in this first quarter. He'll send it back for the Tigers' offense as RIT tries to get maybe one more before the end of the first quarter. 20 seconds left on that clock. Back down underneath for Grothenaller. He'll drive it inside with 13 seconds. 
pass out outside. Tigers now with 10. RIT looking for something inside. Erickson can't be connected with four seconds. It rolls out of bounds. The Bombers will pick it up with 4.2. And all they need to do is just wind out this first quarter clock. An immediate interception by RIT. A fast pass inside. Nothing goes. And that'll be the horn. Six to three. Tigers lead. End of one. Devin, the big story in quarter number one, besides the physicality, besides the scoring, Jake Erickson's homecoming. We talked about that a lot in the pregame in our intro to this game. He's been an almost non-factor. Just two shots, one shot on goal, and right there, missed a setup opportunity. You think the Bombers have been watching him and putting a key on him in this game? Yeah, you know, the way you described it just probably about a minute ago was that he was a non-story so far this quarter, but he is the big story because of the lack of production that he's had so far this year. He has been extremely solid and had a goal in every single game so far this season up to this point. So you're expecting him to eventually find the back of the net. But right now, he's been a non-factor, as you mentioned. I'm not going to say that they're going to... I mean, my guess is there's a little bit of personality or a little bit of a personal vendetta against Erickson on this defense. But from Coach Pierce's side, he's probably telling them, guys, don't worry about him. Treat him like every other player. I don't think the defense is really worried about that right now. They want to win the game, but also want to make sure Jake Erickson doesn't have a career day here on a homecoming match against the Bombers on Higgins Stadium. And I think they've done a great job limiting him so far, but it's all about the other guys that you can limit in that sense. They haven't seen much out of Luke Pilcher, who's the reigning Liberty League player of the year, a reigning first team All-American. So they've Locked out the big guys, but there's a whole lot of players on this Tigers roster to worry about. And you got to play some sound defense on all fronts to shut them down. And no team has done it other than RPI so far this year. To say you think it's going to do it later today are going to be some major changes from what we've seen so far. They've been doubled, and 3-6 might seem close, but really, if you give them a little bit of a lead, RIT is going to take it and run away with it as they've done so many times so far this year and over these past couple years. Bombers break their huddle on the far left side. You mentioned it. RIT's only loss in the year came to RPI when the Bombers faced off against the Engineers here at Higgins Stadium. It was a close contest late. Ithaca could not quite come out on top in this one. Now they look to do the opposite. Come out on top and claw from behind against the number three team in the country, the RIT Tigers. Face off to start the second quarter, and it's won by the Tigers. They'll now be moving from left to right. Bombers will be moving from right to left. RIT swinging it back down underneath. We're going to see Luke Pilcher on the near side. He cradles it in his stick and swings it back towards the Ithaca midfield logo. Tigers gotten six goals from six different offensive players. Holding on to that lead as Pilcher... Sends it back now, a race inside. Swung back out, out of the stick for RIT. They're going to slow it down and reset. 45 seconds on the shot clock. Back down underneath, pass out in front, shot, score! Waved off, never mind. He stepped inside the crease, and it's going to stay 6-3. But a great overall play by Mosrall. A give and go, was able to get it back as he makes a cut toward the net. And the goal doesn't stand but a well-executed, designed play from RIT on that one. Ithaca catches a break on the waved-off goal, and now the offense takes over a poor pass by Ibrahima. It's eventually picked up by Ceramic. Back to Ibrahima. He'll send it back behind the goal for Proctor. Proctor drives underneath, now swings it back out. He'll hang on and try to slow down the offense. 13.38 left in the second quarter. With Winkleman here playing man-to-man -man defense against Ceramic, I want to see Ceramic get out of the way of the goal to open up the rest of the offense for them to get more opportunities. The way he's playing right now is not supporting the rest of the Bombers. Well, it's Kyle Proctor who will slow it down and bring it out behind the net. Now we'll swing back out towards the far side top. Ibrahima will be the receiver of this one. For Ithaca, he drives inside, now reverses direction. Trying to find that circle at the top. 60 in the shot clock. A save by Zborowski. Whistle blows. Play stops. But Zborowski keeps it where it was for now. 13.02 on the clock. The Bombers will get another chance out in front with 60 on the shot clock. Yeah, they'll get that reset, which is going to make a big difference here. 
generally the Bombers are taking quite a long time on their possessions compared to RIT, so they need every second they can get. Well, it's Pastor who had it, who sent it underneath to Ceramic and back to Ibrahima. Ibrahima trying to drive inside, will reverse course twice, no shot, 37 seconds on the shot clock. 12.37 left in the first half. Back to Ibrahima, Ibrahima to the far side. Bombers try to drive and that's a bounce pass that just went wide of the net. Ithaca will be the closest to it on the end line and Kyle Proctor picks it up with 22 on that shot clock. As the referees will try to determine where he throws it in from. We're gonna set it now near that near side corner and the whistles blow again. Just trying to find that positioning. And play will resume and the shot clock has been reset to 60 seconds. Second reset of the possession for the Bombers and the Tigers attacking territory. Trying to drive outside, that one behind and a good save by Zborowski and RIT takes it the other way. For a guy like Zborowski who hasn't seen any action last year. Bounce shot, score! Quick drive, nothing to stop them. Race track out there for the Tigers, they're running away with it. 7-3 RIT. Just mentioned it before, they're getting their possessions done fast, but I want to finish my thought on Zaborowski because, you know, how rude of RIT to interrupt me while I'm speaking. Uh, no action actually last season, didn't play a single game, but has been really solid this year. Been the main starter starting 11 of his 11 games played, and as of recent, three games allowed in each of his last two, had a little bit of a rough middle of the season with four double-digit games, but has turned that around and looks one of the best goalies in the entire Liberty League so far this season. Bombers finally get a face-off, their first of the second quarter. As when they've won the face-offs, they've had good luck. Their three goals have come off of one face-off. When they haven't won a face-off, it's been a bit of a different story as they reset towards the middle of the field on a beautiful April night. On the South Hill, Ithaca sends it out behind the goal. Kyle Proctor in contest. Proctor swings it out, other side, he's gonna be slammed around and just moves it up towards the top. Bombers sidearm that one a little bit high and Zborowski got his stick on it. It goes wide and RP RIT closest to it as it goes beyond the end line. Tigers will take over. 11-16 left in the first half with the Tigers up by four. 7-3 is dropped on the far side. RIT able to pick it back up. Tigers, down low, it's Ian Dinga. Just playing catch over there, TJ Hendricks. Dinga runs inside, sidewinder, save. Nice job by Cole Corrigan and the Bombers keep it out of the net. And they'll send it back the other way with 10.43 left in the half. Michael Gilliam sends it over and the Bombers take over on the attack. Right out in front, is Charlie Niebuhr. Niebuhr sends it back to Proctor who gives it to Niebuhr. Niebuhr a little can of corn for Siku Ibrahima. Slowing down the pace with 50 on the shot clock. 10-18, excuse me, left in the first half. Charging inside, Bombers give it back to Proctor. Proctor racing around. He will not take the behind the back shot as he gives it to Ibrahima with 37 left on the shot clock. Ibrahima, that's a fast one. It's saved by Zborowski. No one's picked it up in front of the goal. Whistles blow. Bombers are the closest to it, but it's going to be RIT ball. And the Tigers, lucky save, good defensive play, and immediately a bad pass by RIT, and the Bombers get it in transition. And that one, another bad pass off the stick and diving to make a play on it was Liam Lennon and it's gonna be RIT ball. I don't think he had to dive for it. Yeah, I don't know. It was very close to that far side corner in the back left, but he was very, seemed very passionate on saving it. Couldn't get it done though. Part of that could be the turf. Today has been a bit of a wet day combined with humidity. The first warm-ish day on the South Hill in quite a while if you put yesterday aside. And yeah, it rained for a little while too. I think it was probably about from noon to five or six or so you know I had golf plans those got rained out unfortunately just one of those days as the humidity took over at night that one a sidewinder RIT 
No problem with the humidity. They're going to score no matter what. It's 8-3, to three. Tigers. You know what? Tigers thrive in humid weather. Yes, I guess they do. You know, they have been just polarizing in these last five goals. It was a 3-3 match. Five unanswered from the Tigers since then. And you look at across the board, they have less shots than the Bombers, 18 to 12, but seven to three in goals, five to one in assists, 11 to nine in shots on goal, and generally have been the superior team across the board. Bombers win the faceoff as they now trail by five with 9.05 left in quarter number two. Ithaca's offense needing to find an answer to the RIT defense. They have not scored since around the midway point of the first quarter. Ever since then, it's been all RIT. There's exactly six minutes to go in that first quarter to the last goal game came for the Bombers, and it's been all quiet since. Colin Adams sends it back underneath to Kyle Proctor, who likes to hang around right behind the goal. Bombers trying to find it as Faker almost loses it. He is able to reverse out of it and send it back. But Ithaca, 35 on the shot clock. He's going to drive in. There is a pass on the near side of Charlie Niebuhr. Niebuhr racing inside. That one intercepted by the long stick of RIT. What a job by the defense. And the Tigers go the other way. Now racing in open space is Michael Grace. Grace will pass it down. Sidewind score. Michael Grace with the interception and RIT. All Tigers to start this one. Clifford Gaston, the Welland Ontario native, one of 23 Canadiens, 9-3 Tigers, 8.03 to go. And he just, on the defensive side, that is, stuck one hand up there to intercept a pass that was, didn't seem to be within his stick span, was able to get it and took it coast to coast to make the pass and really capitalize on what was probably not supposed to be anything for the Tigers. That's his third assist on the year. And, you know, got to appreciate a multifaceted defender. A quick start for the Tigers. Grace said bonsoir, and Gaston said bon nuit. They put it away, and the Tigers, well, they lead by six. You know, I'm not a French student, unfortunately, Toby, so. Growing up in Maine, you pick up enough, okay. enough French. Okay, that's fair enough. Most of it Quebec French, but you pick up enough French to learn as the Tigers' offense setting on the near side. RIT trying to drive, and they will as Erickson. Erickson goes inside. Erickson's second shot of the day on goal is saved by Cole Corrigan, and the Bombers have kept him from a homecoming king. As Ithaca takes it in transition, now immediately on the other side, Bombers trying to get something started. That was a shot that was bouncing and saved by Zeborowski. As it's Proctor up towards the top. He'll wait and wait for the offense to reset and bring on some more players as they go in transition. Ibrahima will hang on to it. He thought about slinging a little bit far behind him, but instead he's just going to back up on the near side. Offense crowds up towards the near fan of the goal. Ibrahima driving. Ibrahima pass behind the goal this time to Ceramic. Ceramic behind the back, bounce pass, and it goes wide. Diving is Ithaca towards the end line. It's RIT ball. Good effort by the Bombers and Charlie Niebuhr, but it's Zeborowski who gets there first, and the Tigers go back the other way. As Caden Dietrich hangs on to it, Dietrich will cross the midfield line, and now it's the Tigers' offense time to shine. Dietrich sends it back to Mosrell. And the Tigers, there's a sidewind score again. This time it's Seth Grotenthaler. He puts up another on the day, and RIT running away with this contest. It's a seven point differential, 10 3 to go, 6 17 left in the second half, first, second quarter. The top shelf snipe for Grotenthaler, and a really solid performance from the entire roster today, but nothing from Luke Pilcher or Jake Erickson, who are arguably two of the top three names on this roster other than Clifford Gaston. Yeah, Gaston the leading scorer in the Liberty League, but Pilcher, he's top 10 in the conference. And Erickson, well, as you mentioned earlier, he's been absolutely dominant for RIT. Maybe of a bittersweet one, his homecoming to the South Hill. 
It will be RIT who gets it in the face off, no contest. And quickly the Tigers trying to race as their offense has done, get quick goals. On the far side by that wing area, they send it back and towards the middle of the field and Michael Finnerin. Finnerin back for Erickson, Erickson to Finnerin, who sends it all the way down for Luke Pilcher. Pilcher behind for the Tigers and he'll take it out in front. RIT setting up in what is becoming quickly a muggy night on the South Hill. Back to Erickson. Erickson drives inside. Erickson a little bit high. Erickson sends it up. That one may have caught the stick of Cole Corrigan. And he'll have to wait for his treat. Tigers hang on. 54 left on the shot clock. 5.23 left in the sec second quarter. Driving inside and having to pull back is RIT. Now back again is Erickson. Erickson will drive inside as right now Michael Finneran hangs on to the ball. Finneran's going to have to get rid of it. 32 seconds left on that shot clock. Erickson dunked off inside. Finneran, he has to back off. That one was a little sidewind underhand. Goes long, but it's Tiger ball. The ref emphatically pointing to RIT with 23 seconds left in the first half. Shot clock, there's 4.51 left in the half. Erickson passes it back. Now he'll have to wait as RIT takes their time. Back towards the top, eight seconds on that shot clock. Now down to seven. It's Erickson once again who passes it under four, three, bounce score. Luke Pilcher gets in on the action and the Tigers up 11 to 3, 453 to go. Yeah, as a little gets a little bit more human outside. Luke Pilcher noticed the water and hit him with the swim dodge to find his way underneath and the bounce shot between the legs of Cole Corrigan. Nothing to stop it there, but really a shift in what this game was. Just 12 minutes ago, you had it 6-3. It's been five straight goals for the RIT Tigers in the second quarter and overall eight straight since Ithaca's last. As they're, they immediately try to take advantage but a save by Cole Corrigan. The Tigers though, on a bad pass by the Bombers, they retain it in the attacking zone, miscommunication and miscues by Ithaca, plaguing them in half number one. So the Tigers will just reset, try to score on that offense. They swing it back. Far side in the attacking zone. With four minutes left in the half. Caden Brunson now in the game. He circles back and swings it over to the far side. All right, T back underneath. Just Grothenhaller. He sends it back. Another shot by Pilcher. This time it finds the stick of Corrigan, and Corrigan passes it back. Bombers in transition. And see it a little slower here. No unforced errors if they can. So Kyle Proctor towards the top as whistles blow. Another timeout called by the Bombers. This one a little bit different than their last timeout. Game was a lot closer at that point in the first quarter with 3.34 left in the second and RIT. Close game at the start. They've run away with it here ever since. Yeah, I mean, you look at their last scores. 2010 over Skidmore, 34 over Vassar. It seems like that is the theme that has been this RIT Tiger season just dominating teams in wins and in their only loss it being close but I mean this team is ranked as third in the nation and third in the Liberty League this team I personally believe to be at least second or first in the Liberty League that RIP RPI lost is most likely a fluke and when you look at the nation Salisbury has that number one spot they've had it for a while but RIT you can never count them out for what is a national title contention. Danny, yeah, look at the Bombers. They're 0-3 in the Liberty League right now, and as it stands, they're down by eight against RIT. Right now, the only other team who doesn't have a win in the conference is Clarkson, who Ithaca will get later in the season. This isn't necessarily a must win, but in the Liberty League, where all those teams are stacked towards the top, and you've got so many ranked teams who always compete for a national championship, Feel like you got to come away with one of those games if you want to really compete in the conference and today coming in felt like it may have been it but right now they need to find their zone yeah i think that game for them was probably the one against rpi it was a 
close one toward the end. They probably could have gotten away with it, but weren't able to when all was said and done. You look at this, I mean, when you're talking gate one of those games, we're talking about exclusively RPI, St. Lawrence and Union. And it's not looking great so far when it comes in this one. So you got to hope against St. Lawrence, I guess. They will have that chance on Saturday right here on VIC Radio as the Bombers take on RIT on a Wednesday night as they reset on offense after the timeout. Trying to get something going this time as Ceramic races inside. There's a shot and a nice block away by Zborowski. was a little bit wide, but he does all he can and sticks it away. So 3.15 left in the half and RIT takes over. And Ceramic, an absolute no-show today because of the defense that RIT has been playing on him. It's not really his fault. A player as strong as him can find production one way or another, but they've just been tantalizing him with their man-to-man -man defense, especially from Tannel Winkleman, who's been doing a phenomenal job so far tonight. So it's the Tigers quickly in the offense, and already another goal for RIT. Clifford Gaston, the Liberty League leader in goals. He leads in points, leads in goals, and his second on the day, it's 12-3 Tigers, 2.51 in the first half. I think that'll do a hat trick for him, and we're talking about a player who might reach a 50-goal mark later this game. He's at 47 right now, needs three more. If he does the same what he's done in the first half and the second half, he'll get to that mark. And, I mean, this is a player who, I mean, you were expecting to be a solid player on the season, but you weren't expecting him to be the best player on the team, and he's been maybe the best player in the Liberty League. Gaston was named the RIT Men's Athlete Player of the Week for his performance last week, and well, he could be well on his way to another one if he keeps it up in the second half. I mean, he's only had one goal this season in two of the games. Every other game, he's had multiple. That's how dominant he's been, and with 47 on the season and 18 assists, I mean, he does it everywhere. Yeah, you don't get 47 goals in 12 games for nothing as the Bombers' offense tries to respond after nine consecutive goals allowed by the Tigers. Ibrahima for Ithaca sets up, and he'll pass it out far side. Now the Bombers in those white uniforms shining under the lights, they had a chance in front for Niebuhr, but he's immediately sent to the turf, and the Tigers retain possession. Surprised there was no flag there. I thought I saw a little bit of head contact on Niebuhr. Nothing is thrown, and I guess you just have to live with it right now. 3-12 penalty might not be doing much anyways. As the defense tries to hold strong with 64 seconds on the shot clock, about 137 left in the first half. And there's going to be a whistle, and now the Bombers catch a bit of a break. So they're going to have it pass back to Corrigan, who sends it back near side for Chris Kiley. He'll send it underneath and a drop by Proctor, but nobody around him, and he'll just slow everything down. Proctor, a little sidewinder, as the Bombers. 118 left in this second quarter. Kali drives inside, he's back underneath to Proctor. Proctor up by the goal. He'll slow it down and bring it back to Siku Ibrahima, as Ithaca, 48 seconds in the shot clock, one minute left in this first half. They've allowed nine consecutive goals. Proctor will have to back out. He'll sidewind it to Ibrahima. Ibrahima, now 30 on that shot clock. Underneath, Bombers, there's Ceramic. That one saved in front, picked up once again by Ithaca. A bounce, no go, goes wide. RIT first for it. Bombers, best chance they've had all quarter, and another great save by Zborowski. Now RIT gets a dark shot clock with 40. Now 35 on the clean clock, and pretty much it's just playing with their food at this point. And they're going to try and let it run out, but before they can do that, a timeout is called as the Bombers trail 12-3 to with 29 12, seconds RIT left in the first the half. half. RIT taking that timeout, and since we last talked from that other timeout, RIT put up more goals. This Tigers offense, what have they been doing in this game to get around the Bombers and get in the net? I almost want to say it's been the lack of of what Ithaca has been able to do on the defensive side, especially in this second quarter. They're not protecting the off-ball movement and focusing on the ball handler, and that will always result in alternate players on a team as good as RIT to make something happen when you don't really see anything in front of you. They've done that so far, and really, if they continue to do it, 
it's going to be hard for Ithaca to stop. It's going to be hard for any team in the country to stop. It's not like Ithaca is playing so poorly that's allowing them to do this. This is a theme that has been happening from RIT over every team they've played in the past half decade. It's not an isolated situation. And really, when you have maybe the greatest Division Three lacrosse coach on your side, that's what he does. He's been able to pick apart this Ithaca defense with all coming on the off-ball movement. Passes inside, a distraction on one side, and a give and go on the other. That's what's been happening so far. And I mean, listen, I'm, I'm laying out the table right now. Watch it happen in these last 29 seconds. I wouldn't hold it against me. Well, the Tigers certainly wouldn't hate it if they could get another score up there on the board. 20 seconds remaining in this first half. Tigers out by the top. They send it to Luke Pilcher. Pilcher sends it on down. Now back up for the Tigers. 14 left in the first half. Clock moves down to 10 as RIT right around the top. Body down by Ithaca. Ball's going to roll towards that far sideline with five left on the clock. So they're going to have to get something going here. Two seconds. Right out in front. No contest. Horn sounds. Bombers keep them off the board. But a stinger in the second quarter. RIT puts up 12 in the first half, six in the first quarter, six in the second quarter, nine consecutive goals, and it's all Tigers as they lead 12-3. What are the Bombers quickly going to have to do in this break to figure things out? It's going to be coming on the defensive side. They need to hold off what RIT has been able to do and also find some more production at the face-off circle. They have been really struggling with that, and we saw a theme and a correlation in the first half. When they were able to win the draws, they've been able to produce offensively. It hasn't happened so far, so if they can flip that script on the draws and find more production defensively, that's where it's going to start. Well, we're going to take a little bit break here as the Tigers holding a 12-3 lead against the Bombers, the number three team in the country. We're going to send it back to the studio where Farrell Hudson, Morgan Spriggs, and Blake Katzman have your halftime breakdown right here on VIC Radio.
all they need to do is just that. Pass there. You look over what RIT has been able to do. It's just been speed. And what they've been able to do, it's like a track meet out there for the Tigers. They're running up and down the field, making all the passes, all the shots they need to do. That is the reason why they're number three team in the country. They score, they score fast, they make these good plays. And for the Bombers, they don't have an answer. And every time they make a bad turnover, guess who's there to capitalize? An RIT attacker, that's just compounding the problem. It's been that, just repetitively so far in the second and third quarter. What is Ithaca specifically going to have to do if they want to turn that around? I mean, you want to say they have to slow it down, make some plays, but really it's avoid the sloppy turnovers. At this point, you kind of got to play with a bit of pace underneath you. If you're going to make up this deficit of nine goals with just on a little under one and a half quarter left to play, you got to bring some speed with you, but you got to make smart passes. You got to make smart shots and find the defects of Alex Zborowski because Zborowski right now playing like the best goaltender in the Liberty League. Has allowed only three goals in each of his last two games and is doing it so far today. Here's Kylie, near side, wraps around, goal line extended. And a shot from Pastor finds the leg of Zborowski and will go back to the side of the Tigers, 14-3. And he's kept it quite quiet as of recent. And what have we been saying about Zborowski? Just talent right in there. You stick him out in there six foot tall, and he's a wall that the Bombers have not been able to penetrate. How about the interception from Pastor? At the goal, Circle will make his push down. Ceramic, a one-on-one -on -one opportunity just outside. And that's a shot you got to put on goal, Toby. Yeah, and that was good defense by RIT, but you get that takeaway. Zborowski was halfway up the field. You just got to speed out in front of him and get to the goal. The Tigers defense close on him, and Ceramic, he just took too long. So resetting now with 60 on the shot clock, 720 in the third. It's Ibrahima. He moves far side, goal line extended to right at X. Playing man-to-man -man defense are the RIT Tigers. Ibrahima wraps around near side, goes top of the box for Pastor. Pastor dodges to his left. A sidewinder shot off the post and back behind the net. Keep it with the Bombers. 40 seconds now on the shot clock and Kyle Proctor to pick things up. He looks to set the table. Moves near side, goal line extended. A pass out to Ibrahima at the corner. Tracing the top line. A bounce shot and saved, but the ball is still loose on the ground. The scrum finally won by RIT, and fast moving the other side are the Tigers. Here they push on the offense. Pushing inside, Erickson underneath. Dish, and there it is for Pilcher. He gets his third of the night after starting out quite cold and really has made his impact as of recent. 15 goals now for the Tigers. They've been on fire. And you talk about 15 goals, but if I were to ask you who has more shots in this game, you emphatically say RIT. It's actually the Bombers. They lead the shot category, but so far all their shots have been wide. They haven't been putting a ton on net, and we saw that on that last possession. One that went wide, RIT picked it up by that end line. They move it down quickly, and nothing the Bombers defense can do to stop the Tigers. Here's Sol in the draw. He'll win it fast over Spillin and go underneath. His shot just wide. He had a goal just a couple of games ago, but won't get the better of him there. 76 on the shot clock. Now they reset for another possession here for what they haven't found a lot of success in. Yeah, offense, bombers have not been able to get anything going, and you said it, they're not a ton of success. A lot of that has just been because they make bad mistakes. Colin Adams drives far side. Pass underneath for Proctor, who holds it solo in his left hand. Near side, goal line extended. Now rotates the other way to far side. Falling down, makes a pass for Meyer. Meyer rotating around. Excuse me, that's Baker. And still has it. The flag on the field, and the shot saved by Zborowski, but it'll keep it with the Bombers. Only the second penalty in this one. And the first one to go against the Tigers. Bombers now have an advantage here. They're going to have a man up for at least 30 seconds. We're still waiting on the timing on this one, but you gotta take advantage in this spot. You're down by 12, you need a goal fast, and it will be 30 seconds. You gotta score. Toby, would you be surprised to hear that RIT is first in the Liberty League in their penalty kill? No, I would not. <laughs> Ithaca trying to break that theme as an errant pass goes the other way, and the Tigers are able to get it at midfield. Their strong penalty kill showing so far, and they will most certainly drown out these last 10 seconds 
on the timer. 5.30 on the game clock as Fitzgibbons, who was called for it originally, will step his way back into this one. And that's the 10th turnover of the game against the Bombers. Only two have been caused by RIT. These are self-inflicted wounds. Michael Finnering, right outside the center circle, will pass back and forth with Winkleman. And they've got the subs in now. RIT is playing with their food. Near side, trying to make a push. Goes back out with Sedlock on the defense. Now far side, tries to make a push down. Falls to his knees, rotating around, doesn't like his look. Ball on the ground, a turnover caused and scooped up by the Bombers. Ryan Maher falls to the ground after he had it for a second. Can they keep it? RIT has it on the four left corner. And finally goes out of bounds and the Bombers will get the possession. Looks like a whistle was blown by our referee and let's see what the call might be here. 429 on the clock. And as we wait for the referees to make that call, a change coming in on the RIT side. Kyle Burbank is now in goal for the Tigers. He'll be making his sixth appearance of the season. He's been their backup goalie so far. they have now gonna give Zborowski the rest for most likely the rest of the night and just try and give the senior some time. Had 25 minutes last game against Skidmore in goal and now he'll probably get around 20 tonight. Turnover at center field. We'll keep it for the Bombers. Here's Colin Adams, waiting for his substitutions on the near side, corner of the box by center field. Right by the wing area, it's Graham Brady. Now up top for Colin Adams at the center circle. Far side for Baker. Baker dodges to his right, hard press defense, finds some room on the left, goes far side, tries to make a push down the lane, spin dodge outside for Adams. Adams near side for Brady. Brady tracing the box, steps underneath, doesn't like his look, passes back for Ceramic at X. Moves far side, goal line extended, and there for Baker once again. Baker moves for a swim dodge, can't find a spot that he likes, 24 seconds on the shot clock, 3.30 on the game. Now Adams drives down the right side of the lane, a sidewinder shot blocked before it gets to, Z to Baker, or Burbank rather. So RIT now fast the other way. And substitutions coming in and out. As they'll move fast. Pass underneath. Three, two, and that will not go in goal. Scooped up by RIT. Finally, Corrigan cleans up the mess. That's the first time the Bombers defense in a while has really shown its strength. And that's holding tight in front. So far today, RIT has exploited them in every which way. And they have taken advantage of all deficits that Ithaca has been able to make. And it's been very solid for RIT this evening. Yeah, now it's at that point of the night where RIT is just going to bring everybody on that bench up. They got a lot of players on this team, and now they're rotating everybody in. If you're the Tigers, it's just get these guys experience. Their second, maybe third game of the year. Let them play. Here's Kyle. He pushes down far side, goal line extended. We'll switch spots with Ceramic and move toward X. 2.13 on the clock, 30 on the shot clock. Far side goal line extended. The pass outside for pass for rather Proctor. His shot just a little bit high and comes back for Peter Nolan. Nolan at X, 25 on the shot clock. Dodges to his right, goes far side. A pass out for Niebuhr. Niebuhr now rotating X. Falls to his feet with a big defensive pull on him and the sidewinder shot just wide. With seven seconds on the shot clock, they're gonna make, they're gonna need some magic to happen fast here. Peter Nolan, once again, setting the table. And six seconds left. No passes until Proctor gets it. And finally saved by Burbank. Yeah, Burbank just went a little bit out of the net to snatch that. Don't know if he needed to, but still, try and get him some action in there. You don't know when the next time he'll come in with this heavy schedule for RIT. Keeping it fast on the RIT side. 1.30 left in this third quarter. 
and a slow progression here on the offensive side. Keeps it with the Tigers. And a pass underneath, quickly for Allison. Allison, a shot wide, just barely missing it. As he made that fast push from midfield after getting subbed in. And trying to keep things going now. Here's Allison once again, top of the box. And we'll pass around. Still trying for it. Allison, close on the defense is Gillum. Back in the game after the injury. 25 seconds on the shot clock and 45 on the game. 20 separating the two. As Allison will have it one more time. He starts from the center circle. Dodges to his right. Doesn't take a shot. Thinks about it. Now goes back for his teammate. Ten seconds on the shot clock and a turnover forced by Sedlock. Trying to push, push fast the other way. That they do. And he's going to take a rip fast. This one off the foot of Birdbank to find the right side wide. But they'll keep possession. 70 seconds on the sh shot clock. And 16 on the game clock. So shot clock doesn't matter at this point. They're going to need to make something happen fast. But they don't seem to have any urgency. Baker just passing things around. Six seconds left. And Colin Adams only just realizes now the buzzer will sound. Ithaca completely clueless on what time was left in the third quarter. And that results in a non-ideal attempt, you could say. Yeah, they've made mental mistakes in this one all throughout. You saw earlier some bad passes, some bad feeds, some bad shots. And right there, a non-shot. And that's just been the story of tonight's game. Mental mistakes that have compounded to this point where 15 minutes left in the contest... And they're just not really, it feels like they're not in this one anymore. And you look at this game, if it were like a wood stove, they just took the governor right off the stove and threw in all the pine wood you possibly can. If you're all right seeing for the Bombers, well, they just poured wa water all over the hot coals. And this game is just about over for Ithaca. Yeah, the temperature got colder and so did Ithaca. And say, night that we expected to be a closer one, but really hasn't turned out that way. And... You look ahead at this point because, I mean, we're at a 12-goal difference between these two teams. 12 straight goals unanswered from RIT. What are you looking forward to toward the rest of the season when they're still trying to hold on for Liberty League playoff hopes? I think if you're the Bombers, hey, you got to make an impression on Saturday. Saturday, 4 p.m. again, that'll be right here on VIC Radio. I think it's going to take on number four-ranked St. Lawrence University. They're just one spot behind the Tigers in the country. But in that game, you look at what happened in the RPI game. That team was number two in the country at the time, and you lost by only one. You maybe try and take some lessons from that, another Saturday afternoon special contest. I think you just got to play a little bit better in that one. You can't allow as many goals early. And if you're in a spot where you're down by five entering the fourth quarter against the Saints, you're in a good spot. And then after that, you get Cortland, Clarkson, and Skidmore. Clarkson is right along with you if you're Ithaca, right around the bottom of the conference. They're 0-3 in conference play heading into today. They are 6-6 six and six overall in the year. You look at Skidmore, they're just 1-3 and three in the conference, 9-4 and four on the season. Those are games that the Bombers can win, and now you're in must-win territory. you got to win both of those games if you even want to have a shot at the Liberty League tournament at the end of the year. So you're looking ahead at those and saying, well, you got to win those, but it starts on Saturday. Put up a fight against St. Lawrence University and show – that you can really play in this game. Because if you can't put up a fight against St. Lawrence, it's going to be a lot harder to come out and put up a fight against even non-conference foe like Cortland the Wednesday after that, never even mind Clarkson and Skidmore to potentially save their season. And that Cortica matchup is going to be interesting. Just one week away today, same time, same place, right here on Higgins Stadium. Going to be 7 p.m. on that Wednesday afternoon. And we saw RIT and Cortland face off earlier this season, that went, as you could probably guess, the way of the Tigers, 20-14, to 14, the score in that one. So RIT will pick up possession here, or excuse me, Ithaca rather, will pick up the first possession of the final period. 15 left to go here on Bomber Radio Network. Devin Jarvis alongside Toby Zabore for the call. And Sam Baker setting things up now with Colin Adams here at the center circle. 14.25 on the clock. Bombers down by 12. Adams make his push down far side. 
Dishes for Ceramic. Ceramic rotating to the top of the box where he doesn't find himself often. Backs down to Adams at X. Keeps it there with 35 of the shot clock. He dodges left. Far side goal line extended to wrap around. Shot bombers are closest to it as it will fail to reach Burbank or the net. And pick it back up with Baker. 26 seconds now. Baker traces the box. Steps inside Main Street. And keeps it on the near side. Proctor now, 17 seconds left. Finds himself at X. Pushes far side. Going to wrap around and make a pass outside for Colin Adams. Or rather, that's Brady, who rips one and finds top shelf. After nearly 30 minutes unanswered from the Bombers, they get one back and bring their tally to four. And a pristine night here on the South Hill. You can hear it a little bit from those peepers coming out. We're starting to get spring in the air, and for the Bombers, just got to get some more on the board. It's all about building confidence into that St. Lawrence game. You can absolutely come in and out that game on a tear. You just got to end this one on a hot streak. Talk about winning quarters. Maybe the Bombers can win the fourth quarter. They're going to have to have some strong play that will come more than just the first goal that they had in the minute 20 in to the fourth quarter. So, and they'll win the draw to keep possession with them. 70 seconds on the shot clock looking to keep their momentum chugging. Near side, Kyle Proctor. He'll swing out. Chris Kiley now, the graduate transfer. <laughs> Kiley, center of the Ithaca logo. Pushes his way downfield. Moves to his right, a pass far side. Still there for it, the Bombers. Peter Nolan. And a dish out as he's rotating around Jack Pastor. Keeping it once again is Chris Kiley. Kiley dodges to his left, wraps around, a pass out. Pastor doesn't like it. Back to Proctor. Now here's Nolan. Nolan underneath, shot score between the legs of Burbank. And a bounce shot to keep it chugging. Just like we said, 5-15 your score, two unanswered in the side of the Bombers. Two goals in the span of a minute, and if you're going to win the fourth quarter, you're going to have to score goals like that. And you might not be able to claw back in this one. It's still a 10-goal deficit with 12.35 left, but if you can get a couple more goals, you're going to be riding a lot of momentum into that contest with the number four team in the country, St. Lawrence. 12.35 on the clock now, and three straight face-off wins. This one coming on a violation for Chris Soule. So Bombers have it once again. And to kick things off, it was Michael Gillum. And it'll come back here for Sam Baker. Setting things up. Colin Adams. As he makes his move inside. Passes for Proctor. Proctor rotating around, gets a pick from Adams, now goes outside for Niebuhr. We haven't called his name in a little while. Far side corner of the offensive zone. 50 seconds of the shot clock. Goes far side, goal line extended. An underhand dish for Kylie. Kylie wrapping his way around, close on the defense are the Tigers. Now here is Baker. Baker moving near side, a pass underneath for Ceramic. Can't hold on to it. Finally tries to BTB it if he can, but Burbank comes up with a loose ball. 11-43. And the Bombers' reign of offense will end now. Or so we think they could cause a turnover to flip the script right away, but. You never know. If it gets four cost turnovers on the day, that's actually beating the number that RIT has by two. Bit of a surprise, but good defensively. And here's a quick possession, finally saved by Cole Corrigan. Bombers had the possession for the first three consecutive minutes of the fourth quarter. And a quick stint for RIT goes back the way of the Bombers. Jared Sedlock, midfield, finds his way past the RIT defense, making a pass nearly wild, but able to scoop it up is Colin Adams, just outside the offensive zone. Dishes it to Sedlock. Sedlock to keep and hold until these subs come in, and finally he does so. Peter Nolan. And a dish outside, Proctor or excuse me, Pastor and Kylie to play catch. Kylie now pushes downhill, a pass underneath 
for Ceramic. Wraps around and finds bottom left. Something's flipped on the sideline of the Ithaca Bombers because three straight goals unanswered for them has not been what we've seen so far this game. Right now, a tantalizing fourth quarter for them, and they're closing the gap to now single digits. His first goal of the day, John Ceramic came into the day with 18 on the season, now at 19. He leads the team in points with 37 now, and you expected it. He had to get hot at some point. He had a six game goal streak going into that Union game where he wasn't unable to put up one. And now maybe the Bombers, you can start putting something together here late. Probably had his worst game of the season against Union with no goal in their last game. And probably what would have been his worst game today is no longer. He's been really focused on by the RIT defense. And Ithaca trying to maybe keep feeding it to Ceramic if he can find production. Baker with the shot and score. I mean, just like that, a quick shot to top shelf. Not sure what's going into Burbank's mind right now, but he's seen four go past him five minutes into the fourth quarter. Yeah, Zebarowski was all over the defense for the Tigers, and as soon as they bring in Kyle Burbank, the Bombers seem to figure him out. They know exactly where they need to be. And I think they've just been able to find more weaknesses. Burbank only 5'10 as compared to the six foot wall. That was Zborowski and Zborowski just physically larger in that net. Any shot, his body was in front of it almost more than the stick. Now Burbank has allowed more goals for than shot than saves on the day, which has been three. And another faceoff win by Chris Soule. He is dominant right now at that spot. And Ceramic has it far side, goal line extended. He'll keep it here. With 9.50 on the clock, 15-7, your score in favor of the Tigers. But the RIT are letting up a couple now as the Bombers are making their push back. Subs coming in. And here's Graham Brady to pass for Baker to kick things off in another possession for the Bombers. They've scored on all but one so far this fourth quarter. Brady pushing down. Wraps around, looking for a pass. Finds his way at X now, near line, goal line extended. Goes out for Brady. Just a step outside the corner of the offensive zone. Brady going now. A pass across for Colin Adams. Steps underneath. Doesn't like it. Goes Ceramic. Far side goal line extended. Nine on the clock. And fast moving offense for the Bombers. Here's Kyle Proctor. Top of the offensive zone. Now Sam Baker stepped underneath. And a shot. A little bit of a lob. But gets it past Burbank. Eight goals for the Bombers in the 15-8 match. What is happening right now? How about a little run of your own if you're at the five in a row, and they are taking advantage of whatever Burbank is allowing in there. And the Bombers offense, we talk about winning the fourth quarter earlier. They're winning the fourth quarter right now. Five goals already in the frame, and they've got a chance to not only bring momentum into Saturday, but maybe carry something later in today. There's still 8.58 left in this game. Nine left to go, and Chris Soule tries his luck once again at the draw. And it will go in favor of the Bombers after a violation. And a flag thrown. Not exactly sure what this is. But a lot of wholesale changes. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Looks like it's going to most likely be a man-up situation for the Bombers. And... The main defenders have come back in for the Tigers. Commandment, Grace, and Hunt all back in there. They took out the second squad that they usually have to bolster up that defense. Let's see if it can make a difference. Bombers with a 30-second power play situation and looking to make the man-up goal happen. Kyle Proctor goes outside. And back and forth, underneath for Proctor once again. Ochino now, a dump underneath, an underhand shot and score for Niebuhr. Right at the doorstep, gets it done. And capitalizing on the power play, 15-9 in your score, six in the frame for the Bombers. And they only needed 20 seconds in that after that face-off draw. 
You know what they say, a rising tide lifts all ships. The Bombers just needed one goal in this quarter to come back in it. And as soon as they did, the floodgates open. If you're RIT, the last thing you want to do is bring Zborowski back in this one. Bring the main defense back because you want to give them as much rest as possible going into one of the toughest stretches of the season. And now you might have to. The Bombers dominating the circle in this fourth quarter. Can they keep it going? Looks like it will go the way of the Tigers for the first time in the period. A ground ball once again scooped up by Chris Soule. Who else? He's been there all fourth quarter long. No better team at ground balls than the Tigers, but they're making it look like that's not the case so far this period. Pressuring defense, full court press, and a turnover. Wallace gets it knocked loose, and the Tigers have it once again and will most likely take as much time as they can. They have 70 seconds on the shot clock, eight on the game clock, can easily run out a minute or more here. Yeah, RIT is one based on speed so far today, but right now you've got such a lead of six goals. Sit on it. Let this one draw as much as you can before you take a shot. Give Ithaca as little as an opportunity to make a comeback. Are you saying that Ithaca should play high pressure defense then? I think they have to at this point. If you're pressing for a comeback, you gotta try and get something here. Here's Finneran. He pushes down the right side. Passes towards X, then goes far side and resets back up top. Pushing down now is RIT. A big bump by Sedlock. 30 seconds on the shot clock, half of it done. Back outside for Finneran. There at the center circle, dodges to his left. Takes a bounce shot, this one Toward the back, who does it go for? It'll stay with the Tigers. 20 more seconds on the shot clock. Finneran with it. And a pass outside. Back up top. And Winkleman now, moving to his right. Spins at the top of the box. 23 moments left. Five seconds on the shot. Can they get a shot off? No, they can't, but there's two seconds on the clock. It'll go the way of the Tigers for just one of those seconds, then it'll have to end. That's what happened. 6.45 in the game clock, and the Bombers down by six. To this point, they've kind of had that minute or goal per minute pace when they've had the ball. So they're gonna need to get some goals and get some face-off wins if they wanna knot it up at 15. Michael Gillum steps inside with 6.30 in the game. Here's Colin Adams, top of the box, goes near side for Proctor. Back and forth between him and Adams. Substitutions now coming in as Adams holds it by midfield. He'll go for Borek. Borkin, rather. And now Baker. Baker drives down the left side. Doesn't like his look, double teamed. Resets outside top for Niebuhr. Niebuhr now passes far side. Trying to push inside of the Bombers. Add X for Ceramic, outside for Baker. Baker dodges to his left with one hand, spins around, keeps it at the top. 5.50 to go, 26 on the shot clock. Niebuhr now wraps around left, a pass underneath, and he sets a pick for Adams wrapping around. 5.40, still pushing down. A bounce shot saved by Ceramic as he gets a pass underneath. 11 seconds, 10 seconds now, they're gonna need to make something happen. Adams wraps around goal, a pass outside. Proctor shoots and saved by Burbank. Comes in big when he needs to win for RIT. The exact back-to-back -back possessions you want. Long drawn out offensive possession, then the defense winds the clock down to those just five on the shot clock, and you don't allow a goal. Burbank, that will be his fourth save on the day compared to six goals a lap. And another drawn out possession what could be for the Tigers here. 60 seconds on the shot clock and five in the game. They can just keep draining out the sand in the hourglass. That's all they need to do. And they have the possession here, not taking any premature shots. No, they just need it slow. But an errant pass goes over the head of TJ Hendrickson out of bounds for the Bombers. What are you looking for now? They need to get the pressure going. Ideally, if they want to win this game, they have to score and then get the draw magic happening. I think if the shot clock goes under 30 seconds to the Bombers well on offense, that's a failure. 
you got to get it in there and get some shots off before that clock reads 30. Otherwise, RIT is doing everything right. So they'll do their best with 60 seconds now. Ceramic. Top of the box, wrapping around to his left. Looks for a pass, Niebuhr. He finds some space at the doorstep. Underneath, a shot saved as he barely loses possession. And Burbank once again with the save. Niebuhr fell down, and the ball went loose. So back for the Tigers, 70 seconds to play with. Nearly an error pass once again, but they won't stop yet. A shot there by Kucher to find the top left corner of the net and score for the Tigers. 16-9 now. Your score and the Bombers finally get a knock answer. It was six straight until the Tigers do it there. And it kind of felt like RIT was due for another one. They've been averaging 18 goals a game coming into this one. They were only at 15. And for so long, the Bombers defense was holding on, and right there, they've been playing their best lacrosse just about in the last few weeks, and just weren't able to hold on at the end. 3.49 now, and Seoul will win it as he has done in this second half. Right now, the draw is going 28 total, and 17 for the Bombers, 11 only for the RIT Tigers. A solid job, Seoul, 13 of 21 on the day. So here is Colin Adams. He pushes down far side. Forced by a double team to go far side. Goal line extended. 45 on the shot clock. Baker has it near side corner of the offensive zone. Traces the top of the line. And triple team. A pass out nearly saved by Niebuhr. Who steps inside. Underhand and scooped up by Burbank. He's been very solid these last few possessions. These last couple minutes. And with three on the clock that could be nearly it for the Bombers. Sometimes you just have to find your footing and it takes a little while and for Burbank, that's all he needed, a little bit of time. Seven goals separating the two teams. And you're looking at just about a goal every 30 seconds or 20 seconds rather, if Ithaca wants to come back. Right now they don't have possession though. And with 48 to play for the Tigers, they can just keep wasting time and that's what they're doing right around midfield a little monkey in the middle right by that Ithaca logo Gillum is the monkey in this situation back up top finally making a push inside the offensive zone 24 on the clock a pass at X a little bit high and the Bombers get it costly turnover for RIT not going to make that much of a big deal in this one but they made a lot more sloppy mistakes in the fourth quarter than they were in the first three. Now pushing their way out of their own defensive zone. Fast is Wallace. Looking for a teammate. Rather, that's Docks. Finally goes far side for Pastor. And a timeout called by Tommy Pierce. I think you look at the job that Tommy Pierce has done, not just today, but against a lot of those really good opponents against RPI earlier, and even against Union, even though that one didn't really go the Bombers' way through oh, most of it, yeah, he's setting this today. team up in a really yeah, good yeah. space for the years to come. You know, this is his first year with the team. He's trying to build a good foundation against the Liberty League that has been dominated by RIT. Since they've joined the conference, they've won 11 consecutive Liberty League titles. There has never been a year that RIT has been a member of this conference that they have not won the Liberty League. You just got to start from somewhere if you're the Bombers, and today, a good sign. You're losing 16 to 9, but they've put up a fight at the beginning and the very end. It's just about what can you do in the middle. Yeah, it was 15 to 3. And what's good is that, Toby, you mentioned this before, but they're going to have a little bit of a higher spirit going into their match against St. Lawrence than if they did if it stayed 15 3. Six goals to the one from RIT in this fourth quarter. Yeah. And hey, if you win a quarter, maybe it counts for something, right? Yeah, I think it should, you know. You win the fourth quarter. <laughs> you get you can a quarter kinda, of a win. I think yeah. that should count on the stat page. I, I think, think so. we should see 6.25. Yeah, I think so. But only if you lose the game. If they were to win it, they then should it, get all four quarters. Then you get yeah, the full win. Exactly. I fully agree with that. Yeah, I think that's, but only for Ithaca. It only applies for yes. Ithaca in this one specific case. Yeah, I think so. I like that reasoning. Me too. Yeah, I think that's the way they should play it. 
for all sports. A little bit of a home field advantage. Can't hurt. Hey, we love Ithaca, right? You got a with a strong Liberty League, it's got to be something, right? A little give. Oh, yeah, you put up nine points and hold RIT to 16, and this you play them every year in your conference, it's got to be worth something. Here you go. Here's Kylie, top of the box. Bombers with possession coming out of the timeout. 130 with 50 on the game on the shot clock. Moving far side was pass door. Pass underneath. Shot scores. Oramic gets his second with a flag call. Just like that, Ceramic cutting off the ball, gets the pass and delivers. Double digit goals for the first time in three games for the Bombers. And I think if you had told these guys, hey, you're gonna get 10 goals against the number three team in the country in this game, I think they'd be happy. Sure, the 15 allowed, maybe not what they wanted, but still 10 goals against RIT is incredible. You should hold your head high after that. Yeah, how many times you look at so far this season that RIT is allowed 10 goals. They had it last game in the 2010 final. They had it against Cortland, against RPI, and a couple other times, but it's not a common occurrence, especially with a closer score. Maybe they're scoring 30 and allowing 10, but they're only scoring 16 here. And French back on the face-off draw. Will win it, but lose the ground ball after just a moment. Still out there, Ithaca trying to conserve their possession. There's more time on the shot clock than there is left in this one. They're about even, but Ithaca needs magic. About 10 goals a second. Toby, how, how about that? I think, you know, it's doable. You just gotta really, really pick up the pace. Or I meant to say one goal every 10 seconds. 10 goals a second might be a little bit absurd. But Niebuhr tries his luck. 47 seconds left to go. He'll shovel it to Baker here at the face-off circle. He steps inside, drives down the alley, and a top shelf shot saved by Burbank. 30 seconds now, and high pressure from the Bombers. Proctor, all the way out there. They're gonna need to get to pass midfield. And a pass by Burbank goes over the head. And will stay with the Bombers. Underneath, quick, Proctor can't get the pass. Takes his eyes off of it and pays for it. Back to the side of the Tigers. 17.7 to play. Six separating the two. And this could be it here. No more pressure from Proctor. And that could be it. I spoke too soon. They're going to come out now and just force a pass, but not play too aggressive. Five seconds. Four. And the time will run out here at Higgins Stadium. RIT 16, Ithaca 10 in the Liberty League matchup. Bombers downgrade to 0-4 in conference play. Tigers 3-1 now and still sit just about third in the conference. They are trying to find their way back, might be third in the nation, but still need to find the top of the Liberty League conference standings if they want to keep that streak of 11 alive. Yeah, and the Tigers, they're going to have a tough schedule up ahead. After this one, they have Clarkson, a game they should easily win. They're at the bottom of the Liberty League. Then you get SUNY Geneseo, St. Lawrence, and Union. SLU and Union, they're top of the Liberty League. They're top in the country. Those are games that are going to be really tough. And you look at what this Ithaca team can do. Carry your heads high after this one. You look back, a game that RIT played similar to this one, it was a 16-11 win over Tufts back in March. Tufts at the time ranked number two in the country. So for the Bombers to do this, an impressive feat despite the poor play in the mid-quarters. Yeah, it's something admirable. And you talk about the end of the schedule for RIT, Union and St. Lawrence. It's going to be a good test going into the Liberty League playoffs and eventually the National League, the National playoffs. They're undoubtedly going to get a at-large bid. And it'll be an interesting end of the season. Bombers now look to this weekend for... St. Lawrence. It'll be right here on VIC Radio on the 13th. So make sure to tune in to that one at 4 p.m. We appreciate you tuning in into this one today. Bombers, now it'll come up with the win, but they still have more to go to keep their Liberty League playoff chances alive. I've been Devin Travis alongside Toby Zabore for this one. We want to thank you all for listening this evening. Saying so long from Higgins Stadium.